Well, howdy friends, Brian Fleshig and Mad River Outfitters in the Midwest Fly Fishing Schools and welcome back to another one of our episodes on fly casting. Today I want to take just a few minutes to review. I want to talk a little bit about why my fly line is two, maybe even three colors, which I think the industry has neglected to properly teach you all. And then at the end today, I want to show you a really cool little exercise that I know is going to help you out dramatically. So we've kind of covered all the major components of the Flycast here in this series. Uh, trust me, we still have plenty more to come, so stay tuned, but let's just do a little bit of review. First and foremost, you grip a fly rod like you're shaking someone's hand, the thumb goes on top of the cork grip, and also the thumb should be as close to the end of the cork grip as possible. This gives you the most control over the tip of the rod, also gives you the most uh, leverage on, on the rod and it just makes a huge difference. I see tons of people that want to cast with their thumb back here. You need to move your thumb to the end of the cork grip. Trust me, it's going to make a major difference in your accuracy and control of the rod. We also start with the rod tip low. One of the major, major issues that most people have is they always want to start with the rod here and if you start with the rod here, you're only making half of a cast. You've got to start with the rod tip low. Most of the time, you want your rod tip at or in the water to start your cast, okay? Step number one is you get the line moving, and then from approximately 10 o'clock to one o'clock, in other words, a 90 degree angle is where you're gonna form the loop. You're gonna speed up and stop the rod at that one o'clock position. Again, 90 degrees is what makes a tight loop and keeping the rod tip traveling in a straight line over that 90 degree arc. As you go past 90 degrees, your loop starts to open up and you start to lose accuracy and energy. We're gonna stop that rod at that approximately one o'clock position and then we're going to allow that rod tip to drift backwards. And we're going to do this very easily by slightly relaxing or breaking, yes, breaking our wrist. Okay, so we're going to form the loop, stop the rod, and allow the, allow the rod tip to drift backwards simply by breaking our wrist. This is the same exact thing as starting with the rod tip low. Okay, we start low, get it moving, boom, form the loop. Start low, get it moving form the loop, okay? Start low, get it moving, and form the loop coming forward. The forward cast is exactly the same as the up cast. The up cast, the down cast are exactly the same thing in opposite direction. Now remember that we've got to let this line stretch and straighten out. We let it straighten out behind us, it'll straighten out in front of you, okay? If that line is collapsing on you, you're coming forward too soon, it's not stretching behind you, so therefore it's not gonna stretch in front of you, okay? So you come forward and you stop the rod above eye level, approximately that 10 o'clock position, just as if you were throwing a dart or hammering a nail in a wall. It's right here, break the wrist, here, lower the rod to fishing position. Get it moving, speed up and stop, drop the rod tip back, catapult it in a straight line, trajectory, headed down towards the water. Remember, the fish are always gonna be below you, okay? They're not gonna be up here. So 10 o'clock to one o'clock, again, absolutely critical to think in terms of that. If you go to 10 to two, it's a 120 degree angle, and 10 to two is a line that's parallel to the water or the ground, and it makes absolutely no sense. Okay, and then in a recent episode, we layered in the double haul, okay? A good fly caster is gonna do at least 50% of the work with this hand by simply pulling on the line at the same time that you speed up and stop the rod tip. So at the same time I speed up and stop the tip of the rod, I give a little tug on the line, a little tug on the line. Remember that little uh, saying, pull, catch up, pull, catch up, pull, catch up, pull, catch up, okay? 
In a coming episode, we're going to break apart exactly what the two hands are doing and talk about the rhythm of fly casting. But in the meantime, just a quick review on some of the high points and make sure that you're getting that double haul layered in there because it is absolutely critical. As our good friend Flip Pallet always says, you don't cast with the fly rod. The fly rod is an overpriced pointing tool you cast with this hand. Pull your loop tight. Pull that loop tight. Pull that loop tight. It's going to cast just like butter. Okay, so <clears throat> I get this question a lot. And when we're teaching lessons, when I tell people about this, it turns out that they have no idea why modern day fly lines are multicolored. Okay? And go back and review a weight forward fly line. The weight forward fly line has a front taper and then a belly. And that's the mass, the fat part of the fly line. Well, this particular line that I demonstrate with and also fish with on a regular basis is bright orange on the head and then the running line where it transitions into the thin running line is white. Okay, that's what this is telling me. The, <clears throat> the end of the orange is the end of the fat head and this is going to be the skinny running line. It is absolutely critical, friends, that you've got to have the head of the fly line inside the rod tip before you can pick up and go to make a cast. It's amazing to me how many people don't know why these lines are colored these days like they are, but it's absolutely critical that you have the head of the fly line inside the rod tip, okay? It can be a foot or two or it can be a little bit more, but make sure you aren't trying to pick up that fat head on your skinny running line. It's just not gonna work, friends. It's gonna flop all over the place like a wet noodle. You cannot ask skinny running line to haul around a fat head of a fly line. I've said it before, but you can't ask a skinny kid to push a fat kid. It's just not gonna happen. Okay, so you've got to have that in there and then you're going to haul, make a good cast and you're going to shoot the line that you need. But when you go to pick up, you have got to strip it in so that the color of your head is inside the tip. Then you can pick it up and shoot what you need to shoot. Okay, very, very important. And I see a lot of people run into trouble when they're trying to make a long cast and they're trying to carry way more line than you really physically can in the air. Make sure that head is within inside the rod tip and you're going to shoot the rest and it's going to go just like butter. Okay. <clears throat> you just can't cast the fat head on skinny running line. So whatever color your head is. Now some lines may also have a separate color for the front taper. That's kind of cool. It tells you where that front taper is. And some lines may actually have a different color for the rear taper to give you an idea where that transition is. But in this case, I've got bright orange on my head, white on the running line. That's really all I need to know, to be honest with you. So the orange always has to be inside the tip of my rod in order to execute that cast. Okay. Very, very, very important. Now, I want to show you this really cool exercise, and this has helped hundreds, maybe thousands of our students over the years uh, with their casting. And this is going to really bring home keeping your elbow as stationary as possible. It's going to really bring home not using your body at all to fly cast. The less you can use your body and the less you can move, the better off you are. It's really simple. My opposite knee. My left knee is going to go on the ground. My right knee is going to be up. I'm going to put my elbow on my knee. And everything else applies. Start low. Thumbs on the top of the cork grip. I've got my hands together. I'm ready to haul. I'm going to form my loop. Haul. Break my wrist. Form my loop coming forward. Boom. Drop the wrist back. Put the double haul in there. This is really going to teach you how to use the tip of the fly rod properly. It's going to maximize what the rod does for you. And I'm telling you, if you've been struggling in the past, this is going to really drive this home. And I promise you, you're going to be fly casting. It's going to be just like butter. 
okay? And you're gonna realize that the rod does all the work and not you, okay? I see people fly casting and, and like Lefty Cray used to say, they look like they're gonna tear their underwear. Um, they're, they're just boom, this and that. And it looks like they're doing ballet or something. And the less you can move your body, the less you can move your arm, the more the tip of the rod is gonna do for you. So I promise you, practice this, okay? Knee on the ground, you can shoot plenty of line. We get a lot of people that ask us about fishing from canoes or kayaks. There's absolutely no problem, okay? So it's a super simple exercise. Put your knee on the ground, okay? You move your body as little as possible for that matter. Just go ahead and sit on the ground and I can fly cast just perfectly. So there you go, friends. Just a quick review of all the things that we've covered so far here in this series. Uh, a little note on understanding about the head of the fly line. You've got to have the head of that fly line inside the rod tip before you can try to pick up the line. The running line, you're simply going to shoot. And of course, shooting that line is greatly going to be aided by your double haul. Double haul, double haul, shoot the line, and you're ready to go. So, and then try that little exercise. Get down on one knee, put your elbow on your knee. That way you're not moving your shoulder, you're not moving your body. You're gonna maximize what the rod does for you and you're gonna be amazed at how simple the fly cast is, how much more accurate you are. I'm telling you, it's gonna be just like butter. Just like slicing hot butter, fly casting is easy. So thanks for being here as always. Subscribe to our channel. Hit that like button and stay tuned because we've got a lot more fly casting coming at you. If you like this video, hit subscribe. It helps out a lot. And check out these videos. We think you might like them too.